I started my um, solo career in the early 90s. And um, this story that I'm going to tell tonight is actually my favorite. And it is the first story that I ever wrote. It's a true story. And I hope that you like it. Um, I grew up in Akron, Ohio, and I first became aware of Margot Prayed when we were in junior high school. She lived in my neighborhood. We had gone to grade school together. Her parents went to the same church that I went to, but I didn't really started to pay attention to her until junior high school. She wasn't what you would call pretty. She was cute. She wore very, very tight sweaters and very, very tight skirts. And when she walked down the aisle, or in the hallway, or on the street, her behind would go back and forth. Because you see, Margot really liked the boys. <laughs> and the boys liked her. There's a Margot in every school. <laughs> she was very friendly. If you saw her on the street or whatever, and you said, hi, Margot, how you doing? She would always respond by saying, I'm the player. I play the field. I play the field. Because you see, Margot really liked the boys. And the boys liked her. You got a real good sense of her character at house parties. That's what we did back in the 60s. We lived in the house, you had a basement, and we would party down there. We have a record player with 45. Margot was very good at doing the mashed potato. <laughs> we would clear the room for her and watch her. She'd put her arm behind her back and she would go. She was also good at going behind the furnace. There's this little crawl space behind the furnace. And she'd go behind there with some boy, and they would make out. Everybody knew that's what they were doing. Nobody said anything. Until Margot's big brother would show up, Douglas. Douglas was tall. He'd come walking in, wouldn't say anything to anyone, walk over to the record player, take the needle off the record. Okay, folks, I'm looking for my sister. I know she's in here. Tell me where she is. All the girls would put their head down, kind of embarrassed, but the boys would start to snicker. And then one boy would point over to the furnace. Come from out of there, Margot. You gotta come home. And out she would come. Her hair was a little askew. There were some buttons unbuttoned on her blouse. Her skirt was a little wrinkled. Totally unselfconscious. Why are you always bothering me, Doug? <laughs> you gotta come home. Look at you. You ain't nothing but a whore. Daddy is going to beat you, and I'm gonna stand there and watch. Why are you always bothering me? You're on punishment, remember? You did this last week. You got to come home. 
Sometimes Margaret would ask one of the girls for a comb to comb her hair. Of course, nobody would offer their comb for Margaret. She'd pat it down. She'd button up her blouse. She'd smooth out her skirt. And then she would slowly go up the stairs. And then she would turn very dramatically. Bye. <laughs> 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 Sometimes an obnoxious boy, particularly an obnoxious boy, would yell out, See you next time, Marga. <laughs> this would really piss Doug off. He would turn and look at the guy, and he would know that he was thinking, If it was in my power, I would kill you now. They would leave. I would never remember the boy that would come from behind the furnace with her. I could never, I could never remember who those guys were. <laughs> but Marga really liked the boys. And the boys liked her. But we did not like Doug. <laughs> Doug was creepy. Doug was scary. Doug later became a police officer. <laughs> Where Margaret was really entertaining, though, was in French class. Our French teacher was Mrs. Bump, and she insisted on speaking French as much as possible. She would stand in front of the doorway of the class and greet us. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Bonjour, monsieur. And we had to respond. Bonjour, madame Bump. You get into the class. The fun part, though, was whenever she would ask Margot to recite. That was really a lot of fun for us. Come on, tallyvoos. <laughs> Come on, tallyvoos. <laughs> Pommy quap buku. <laughs> And Mrs. Bump would get very upset. <laughs> Margo! Margo! And this would really piss Margot off. My name is Margot. No, 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 no. The T is silent. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's Margot. It's not Vuz. It's Vuz. The S is silent. So she would say the S is silent, the T is silent. I mean, what kind of class is this? And we would all start to giggle. And you know, it, it was always a little bit hard for us to sort of get with Mrs. Buck because she would, she had a way of pronouncing our names very Frenchified. Instead of Donna, it would be Donna. It would be Philippe. It would be Robert. And uh, Margot was Margot. But I don't know whether Margot didn't know how to pronounce the words, or she just purposely was doing that because she was pissed off at the way Mrs. Bump would mispronounce her name. On the other hand, there are not a lot of jobs for French-speaking black people in Akron, Ohio. <laughs> so it's not like she could put this on a resume. <laughs> And I knew she wasn't. I knew she was going to probably get a D or an F in that class. And I asked her one time. I said, "Margaret, why did you sign up for this class?" And she said, "Girl, I heard that French was a love language. <laughs> you know, Italian is a love language too, but they don't teach that here. So I thought, well, let me sign up for that because you know the problem with English, Donna." It ain't got no love in it. <laughs> and I said, okay, yeah, I can see the logic of that. <laughs> By the time we got to high school, her reputation was set in stone. Guys would walk through the hallways and say, Margot's got it, pass the word. Margot's got it pass the word. But she never seemed to care about what people were saying behind, behind her back. 
whenever you, whenever you would see her, she would always respond the same way. I'm the player. I play the field. I play the field. You see, in the black community, black guys have their own rap. My oldest brother, whenever you say, how you doing, Frankie? He will say, pretty fair for a square. My stepfather used to say, I'm just sitting here with the chickens. I don't know what that means, but that's something he always says. But Margot was the only girl that I knew who had her own rap. I'm the player. I play the field. I play the field. Cut ahead to college. I'm in college. Margot. She graduated from high school. I ran into her at J.C. Penney. She looked a little worn out. There were rumors <coughs> that she was prostituting. I don't know if that's true, but that's what people said. I said, how are you doing, Marga? Oh, I'm a player. You know me, I play the field. I play the field. You in college, Donna? I said, yeah, I am. You like school? I said, yeah, I do. I do like it. She said, girl, why don't you call me and, and, and we can get together and, you know, we can hang out. I said, sure, Marga. I'll do that, sure. But I knew I wasn't going to call her. Because, you know, we didn't really have a lot in common. As it turns out, that was the last time I saw Marga. Six months later, she died. There were rumors going around that she died from a botched back alley abortion. The official cause of death was an aneurysm. It happened fast. One minute she was here, and then she wasn't. Her funeral was very private. I have never talked to anybody who ever went. It was strictly a family affair. She was only 20. Oh, wow. Over the years, when I've traveled back home, sometimes her name comes up. And usually it's the females, sometimes the guys, who speak very negatively about her. There are a lot of born-again Christians among the people I grew up with. Enough said about them, the better. But whenever they start to put her down, I always stand up for her because when all is said and done, Margot never hurt anybody. Thank you.